too. So then how, how do we approach figuring out what is that higher cause? Well, the first thing is to look at what happens on the Earth uh, in, you have to be a little bit more broad than looking at earthquakes and volcanoes as just pieces of rock moving around on the Earth. That is just static things that are, you know, periodically shifting and moving. Um, you have to look at, uh, you have to look in the domain of what we call cosmic radiation. So, for example, I've, uh, around uh, earthquakes, there's a phenomenon of eyewitness accounts of various kinds of strange lights that happen around uh, the epicenters of earthquakes. Many people have described seeing strange lights. For example, in the Chilean earthquake uh, back in 2008, there was a, a show of uh, lights around uh, the area in Chile where you, had the, where you had the earthquake, and some people claimed to have actually it, filmed it. You're saying they see lights during the earthquake? Or? Almost, like, almost like there's lightning or something like that in the distance. Hmm. And uh, some investigators have actually surveyed uh, people around the world who have been near earthquakes to make clear that uh, these people aren't just seeing things. But this is a widespread phenomenon. Earthquake lights, something that's also uh, reported very often are strange erratic behavior of animals, like dogs and cats, for example, uh, are they have a legendary ability to forecast an earthquake before it happens. Snakes will take off in the area. Rats will flee an area. Um, other phenomena like strange weather patterns right before an earthquake. These are all eyewitness accounts. And um, we've been having these eyewitness accounts going back for hundreds of years. Now, there are other... Um, there have been attempts to explain this stuff. You know, the usual attempt is that people are just crazy. Um, which is not true. But other attempts have been to say, well, maybe there is some kind of electromagnetic phenomena happening that the animals can sense and that people can see sometimes. It's not just the mass hallucination in different parts of the planet at different times. Right, like right now there's a mass hallucination that there's no such thing as a British Empire, right? But no, it's, yeah, it's not a mass hallucination. There is some kind of a real effect going on. So the question is, is there, is it an electromagnetic effect? Because then you would have a connection between the sun and the earth through the fact that we are living in a cosmic radiative environment. So some of the other effects that have been recognized is, for example, in the, there are uh, magnetometers uh, near the time of an earthquake, before the earthquake, uh, can register uh, long wave, ch strong changes in the geomagnetic field. These are called very long frequency or ultra long frequency uh, oscillations, which are very high amplitude, they're very strong oscillations, but it's about uh, 5 to 10 cycles per second changes in the geomagnetic field. And for example, the whopper that hit Alaska in 1964, which was a uh, magnitude 9.2. Are you, are you talking about a, a cycle of a change in the magnetic field or anomalies and irregularities from what is known as the the uh, regular shape of the magnetic field? Well, the geomagnetic field already has uh, secular variations, which are determined by some phenomena inside the Earth, but also determined by uh, activity of the sun, for example. Our magnetic field is very closely connected with the interplanetary magnetic field. But what these guys are measuring, for example, this uh, 1964 Alaska earthquake, there was a magnetometer which happened to be very nearby and also at a high level so that it wasn't damaged in the earthquake, measured, uh, it was between 5 and 10 hertz cycle of change of, in, of intensity and direction of the earthquake, or of the uh, geomagnetic field, uh, about two hours before the earthquake actually hit. So an, an actual change in the Earth's magnetic field preceded the earthquake? The magnetic field of the Earth, the local magnetic field of the Earth, changes in response to an earthquake before the earthquake actually happened. Mm. The idea that a magnetic field is going to shift the, shift the rocks on, it, on the Earth is kind of a strange idea, but the fact is that the rocks do shift coincident with some kind of a discharge of electromagnetic radiation, which changes the magnetic field. It can be picked up by weather satellites as increased uh, infrared radiation before and after the earthquake. Um, it can also be picked up by 
some of these global positioning satellites, who, which, uh, which have to essentially shoot signals back and forth through the ionosphere, which is a charged layer of the, of the atmosphere. And they pick up that days before, up to six days before an earthquake, uh, you have a change in the ionosphere above the area that the earthquake is going to hit. And then that change diminishes after the earthquake over a period of several days. So you do have a coincidence of electromagnetic phenomena and tectonic phenomena. So the cause is not clear yet. That's one of the questions that we need to look towards answering. But the relationship is definitely there. Now, in recent videos, uh, some members of the, the basement team have been discussing the 62 million year cycle of the um, solar system through the galaxy mm -hmm. um, and the, the different effects that this has for us on Earth, changes in influx of cosmic radiation um, in, the, uh, in biodiversity, etc. Does this uh, come into our equation here? We're going to be releasing some more material on this over the coming days as we investigate it. But yes, there is some clear uh, relationship. You have the 60 to 62 million year cycle of biodiversity, which you mentioned. Some of the, the researchers who identified the 62 million year cycle threw open a net to say, okay, what other cycles on the Earth do we know of that follow a roughly 60 to 62 million year cycle? One of them was the uh, tectonic changes on the Earth. And we've seen that uh, in the great so-called mass extinctions, like the extinction of the dinosaurs or the Permian-Triassic extinction, that uh, those extinctions uh, are associated with increased volcanism and other increased tectonic activity. In fact, the Permian-Triassic extinction is actually, which was like the big mother of all, ex all extinctions, like 98% of the species went extinct, uh, is today blamed predominantly on an explosion of volcanism uh, on the surface of the Earth. So there is a 62 million year cycle of this tectonic activity. Now, what we're interested in is the fact that the anti-entropic development of life on the Earth, which goes through these so-called mass extinctions in the form of transformation of the organisms into higher and higher types of organisms and a transformation of the whole biosphere in these shifts, that must be due to a change in the cosmic radiation environment of the whole solar system. So therefore, a link, a current link that, were we to be able to find a link between increased cosmic radiation in the form of the sun's activity and increase in tectonic activity on the Earth, then we have an experimental domain to uh, work with while observing the fact that you have increase of tectonic activity and rapid transformations of organisms, periods of transformation of organisms on the Earth, which is periodic. And the other interesting thing is that the, the 62 million year cycle is not a solar system cycle, but it's actually a cycle of our travel through the galaxy. So this is a galactic transformation period. Well, it really seems like, uh, well, there's a lot of implications for what you've just <laughs> gone yeah. through. Um, a lot of what we witness on Earth every day is a, the result of a higher process, but then also it seems that the, there's a, a real coherence between the, these developmental processes, um, the development of organisms and in these tectonic shifts um, that are a, mm -hmm. a, effect of a higher process. Um, I'd like to ask you what we should do with this. I mean, what, where, where do we go from here? What do we need, given the current economic and political situation that we're in? Where do we go with this? Well, over the next couple of days, we're going to be pulling together a more detailed picture of the implications. But for now, it's pretty clear that step one, uh, besides dealing with the immediate damage of uh, in Japan and the surrounding areas due to the earthquake and then the gigantic tsunami, uh, we need to get rid of President Obama. 
that would be the best first step. And then we could put through uh, the Glass-Steagall and the other types of, the other types of uh, economic changes so that we can start putting back together our uh, human spaceflight program. We need to do things like NAWAPA and rebuild the, uh, the system of human control over the biosphere. But along with that, we need to, again, uh, rev up our acceleration of human beings into space. Because, for example, we need to see what types of uh, seismic activity happens on the moon. We need to see what kinds of seismic activity happens on uh, Mars. We don't know. Perhaps Mars is having earthquakes right now, too, that are huge that we can't measure. Do we, do we measure seismic activity on any other body besides the Earth? Well, the, uh, the Apollo astronauts put seismographs down onto the surface of the moon, but those were shut off pretty soon after the Apollo program was ended. So we used to, but now we're confined to the surface of the Earth. But we need to see, is this a solar system-wide phenomena? And the only way we're going to do that is by getting out into space with people who can do the exploration and put the types of devices out there that we need. Right, because if we're not measuring uh, the, the possibility that this could be a, an effect on the level of the solar system, then it's going to be very difficult to determine that higher cause. Exactly. If we stay on Earth, we're pretty much screwed. We've got to bring people and uh, cats and dogs to the moon and to Mars to see if they respond at the, same th at the same time to heightened solar activity the way they do on the Earth. We've come to a time that science must advance itself to the point that we understand better how to deal with some of the peculiarities of our galaxy. Because our solar system, of which the Sun is the center, is merely a part of our galaxy, an integral part. The galaxy is not something distant from us. We are in the galaxy. We're on the rim of the galaxy. That's where the solar system is. And the, often in the past, like the extinction of whole species some time ago, entire species were wiped out and new species emerged of living species on this planet. It was caused by a temper tantrum of sorts, you might call it, by the galaxy. And these are the kinds of things we have to finally come to understand. How does our galaxy work? How does our solar system work? And what are we going to do about getting out there with space exploration by man to find out what really goes on on the moon, to find out some of the other things that de determine what is going to happen to us on Earth? We have to get out there and find out what it is. And exploring the solar system is one cent step, but understanding the galaxy is absolutely indispensable.